Okay. Welcome everybody. This is 1.6, uh, limits involving infinity. So today we are going to use limits to find vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So based on the behavior of our given limits and our given function, we can find where a vertical asymptote exists or a horizontal asymptote. So with that being said, let's go ahead and analyze the first function you see on the paper. Uh, we have seen this one before. This one is the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared does not exist. So the reason we say that this does not exist is because as you approach zero from both sides, so as we approach zero, from both sides of the x-axis, we see that the tails of the graph start to head towards infinity. Now, I said last time that since that the left tail is headed towards infinity and the right tail is headed towards infinity, we have no idea what infinity is, so we will state the limit as does not exist. But now, we want to define this behavior. This behavior shows us, the behavior of the limits shows us exactly where a vertical asymptote will exist, or again, a horizontal asymptote. So now, looking at this graph again, as you approach zero from the left, and as you approach zero from the right, you see that your tails are headed towards infinity, and you realize that they are never ever going to touch. So something has to be between them. And that something is a vertical asymptote. And to indicate that behavior, well, we use this notation. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity. This means that with this limit notation, we know there exists a vertical asymptote in, actually, at 0. So in between those two tails is what I was going to say. Okay, uh, the definition of what we're doing here, uh, the notation, the limit as x approaches a of f of x will equal positive or negative infinity. This means that the values of f of x or the values of y can be made arbitrarily large by taking x sufficiently close to a number a but not equal to a. The infinity symbol is not a number, it is a notation that expresses why a limit doesn't exist, but it also expresses where an asymptote may be. Okay, um, with that being said, we say the limit increases or decreases without bound, f of x becomes infinite as x approaches a, and the limit of f of x as x approaches a is infinity. Just other ways to read this infinite limit. All right, so, the next definition, the line x equals a is called a vertical asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if at least one of the statements is true. So based on these limit statements, these can show you where a vertical asymptote is. So looking at our statements, I'll zoom in a bit right there. So looking at the first one, Let's say you're approaching A from the left and your limit goes to infinity. And then you approach A from the right and your limit goes to infinity. This means that the limit from both sides at A is also going towards infinity. All right. And then let's say you approach A from the left and you go to negative infinity. And then you approach A from the right, and you also go to negative infinity. This means, again, since the left hand and the right hand are negative infinity, the limit from both sides at A is also negative infinity. Okay, but now we could also state that, let me erase this. Well, I could also state that the limit as X approaches A from the left is infinity, and the limit is as x approaches a from the right is negative infinity. This means that 
you would have a graph that looks something like this. So if you approach A, let's say, let's say this line is x equals A. So as we approach, that's two A's. So as you approach A from the left, one tail goes to infinity. So one tail goes up. And then as you approach A from the right, one tail goes down. So one tail goes to infinity, one tail goes to negative infinity, which means you know that in between these two tails has to be a vertical asymptote. So, and the same could be said for other limits like this. Okay, so all this notation is stating is where a vertical asymptote could exist by the use of limits. Okay. Moving on, go to our next example. And I have the calculator up here so I can show you more calculator work. But today is going to be a little different, I believe, because I want to get, oh, uh, well, not for the first one, but for the second one, it'll be a little different. Okay, so number one, of course, the graph is on the right side showing you, yes, there's a vertical asymptote. And algebraically, we know there's a vertical asymptote. So since we're given 2x over x minus 3, we know the denominator can't be 3. Therefore, there's a vertical asymptote. But that is algebra checked. We want to check it with calculus. We want to check it with limits. So find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 2x over x minus 3. And find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 2x over x minus 3. OK. So one of the best ways to do this is your xy charts that I showed you how to make. OK. So let me do that. So I'll handle the first one. I'll call it A. And we're going to have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 2x over x minus 3. All right. And I'll make our little xy chart below. OK. So if we're approaching 3 from the left, here, I'll zoom in just a little bit. There you go. OK. So if I'm approaching 3 from the left, we need numbers smaller than 3. So how close can we get to three? Well, let's choose some good numbers. How about, oops, how about 2.9? How about 2.99? 2.999, and why not one more? 2.9999, okay. And I showed you how to use your calculators before, but I'll do it again. I'll hit y equals, and then I'll do, uh, where's my fraction button on this one? n over d, so 2x over x minus 3. Hit enter, second window, make sure I'm on ask, which I am, and then second graph. I'll delete everything that's here. And now, since we're approaching 3 from the left, I'll start with my 2.9, which gives me negative 58, 2.99, 2.999, and then 2.9999. OK, hopefully that's enough information. If not, add more nines. Maybe you want to know more. So we have negative 58, negative 598, negative 5,998, and then negative 59,998. Let's say I did one more nine. Let's see if it'll let me. Four, five. Yep, so basically negative 600,000. Okay. Well, hopefully this is enough information 
to let you know where your limit is going. So you see, as my x values get closer and closer to three from the left, my y values start to get increasingly smaller towards what number? And if you guessed it, that number is negative infinity. So that number would only get smaller and smaller and smaller and head towards negative infinity. Okay. So I'll just do this. Let's say that's headed towards three and that is headed towards negative infinity. So what we can say is that based on our limit, without even looking at that graph, right? That graph is there just to support our answer. Based on our x, y charts, based on our calculations, we can say that the limit as x approaches three from the left of two x over x minus three will head towards negative infinity. And if you look over on the graph, that is true because Look at our graph. And as I approach three from the left, my y values are headed towards negative infinity. So always thinking of the graph is a good way to check your limit work. Check your x, y tables. All right. OK. So now let's do it from the right. Same exact thing. Okay, B, the limit as x approaches three from the right of two x over x minus three. All right, go ahead and make your x, y chart. And we're approaching three from the right, but we wanna get really, really close to three. We want to get really close to 3. So I could say 3 .1, 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, 3.0001. All right. So we have four values there. You can add more values if you need more information. So this hasn't changed. So this is 3.1. And then 3.01, and then 3.001, and 3.0001. Okay, now look at our numbers here 62, 602, 6002, and 60,002. So, once again, Based off your chart, we see that as my numbers from the right get closer and closer to three, my y values are getting larger and larger and larger. They're getting increasingly larger, and they can only get increasingly larger towards infinity. So, based on our xy chart, based on our calculations, we can now say that the limit of 2x over x minus 3 is headed towards infinity. Okay, awesome. So, and again, you can prove it by the graph. If you looked on the graph over there, as I approach three from the right, we see that my y values head towards infinity. So we are using limits to prove where vertical asymptotes are at based on our calculations. And then we can prove it by the graph. So look at our answers. We have a negative infinity and we have a positive infinity. So one tail goes to negative infinity, 
the other goes to positive infinity at this number of three, meaning there has to be a vertical asymptote in between them. Okay, and that's how you'll work these for now, okay? All right, now let's look at the next one. We have tangent. Let's see, not just, there you go. Okay, so we have tangent. Of course, there's a graph for tangent just to help you prove, you, prove your work. Uh, oops, no, nope, that's too far. Okay, perfect. So this says, find the limit of tangent x as x approaches pi over two from the left and as x approaches pi over two from the right. All right, so now this one is gonna be a little tricky because pi over two is a run on decimal number. So I'll show you how to work this in your calculator. All right, so first let's get started. I'll say A, the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left of tangent x. All right, make your xy chart. But now this one's gonna be a little complicated to plug in. Okay, first thing you need to make sure of is you are in radians. You must be in radians. So, Make sure you put your calculator in radians. Okay, so let me see, mode, I am in radian mode, perfect. So y equals, and then I'm gonna just type tangent of x. All right, all right, then second window. And now we are actually going to change things up. We are actually going to use the auto feature because we need a start and we need to step. Because right here, let me clear this out, we are gonna start at the value the limit is approaching. We are gonna start at our pi over two. So second pi over two. And when I hit enter, look what nasty number it types out. 1.570 blah, 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 right? Okay. So now here is the most important part, the change table. This will help you step. It'll help you step in increments. If you have the TI-30XS, the blue calculator you're working with, the only thing different is that this will say step. So we wanna get as close to pi over two as we can. So some options are this. We can try 0.1. If 0.1 doesn't work, then we can try 0 0.01. If 0 0.01 doesn't work, if you feel that it's still not enough information, then you can add more zeros, 0 0.001. And if you still feel that's not enough, then add more zeros. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's start off with what I first had. Let's start off with 0 0.1. We're gonna step every 0.1. And now I'm gonna actually hit the auto. So I'm gonna hit auto. Okay, then second and graph. And right now we have enough generated numbers, right? It generated the numbers for us, which is great. But these numbers do not give us enough information. So listen very carefully. When I scroll up on the calculator, those are the numbers from the left side. So when I scroll up, these are numbers from the left. If I scroll down from where pi over two is, these are the numbers from the right. These are the numbers that are greater than pi over two. So what we're looking at are the numbers from the left. So let's see what we have. I'm gonna go up a bit. So at 0.97, we're at 1.4. 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, 1
1.07, we're at 1.8. 1.17, 2.3, 3.2, 4.9, 9.96, and then we land on pi over 2, which gives me an error. So these y values are not sufficient enough to tell me that my limit is actually going towards infinity. All we were left with was a positive 9. Is there any way that 9 tells you that this limit is going to infinity? Not unless you believe it, right? But no, it is not enough information, which means back to the drawing board. Let's go back to the window or the table set. You're going to have to clear this out again and retype pi over 2. Hit enter and then do 0, 0.0. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll go through with you. Let's look at what 0 0.01 does. And then hit second and graph. Okay, now again, when I scroll up, these are the numbers from the left. Okay, look, we're getting better. 33, hang on, 33, 49, 99. That is almost enough information to tell us that our limit is going to infinity, but not enough because 99 is definitely not considered a big enough number to head towards infinity. So again, Let's get more information, which means back to the table set. Clear this out, type in pi over two, hit enter, and now I'm gonna do 0 0.001. And let's see, second graph. Scroll up, oh, look at that. 200, 250, 300, 500, 1,000. We are getting better. Definitely getting better answers. Now, 1,000 seems like a number where we can believe that our limit is starting to head towards infinity. But let's say I still don't believe it. Then back to the table set. Clear, pi over two, and let's go 0, 0.0000, I'm gonna do four zeros and a one. And now let's see what we get. Graph, oh, and these numbers are so much better. So look at what we have now. 20,000, 25,000, 33,000, 50,000, 100,000. These are definite numbers. These are perfect numbers to show us that our limit is headed towards infinity. Okay, so I'm gonna write these down. I'm not, I'll just choose five, four or five of them. So let's say, yeah, I'll do that. So 1.5707, oh, that's 0, 0.074, all right. So 1.5707, Zero seven four gives me twenty thousand, and then go down one point five seven zero seven five gives me twenty five thousand. I can skip, of course. I'll go to the next one. One point five zero seven seven. And I get 50,000 and I'm at 1.57078 and I get 100,000. Now this is enough valid information to tell me that as my x values get closer, to pi over two from the left, my y values are getting larger and larger towards infinity. Which means our limit for tangent is headed towards infinity. So the limit as x approaches pi over two from the left, is going to be infinity.
All right. And this is how you use the start and step feature on your calculator. Well, graphing calculator, it's a uh, start table, change table. On the TI-30, it's just start and step. So same exact, same exact process. That's it. OK. And again, the graph is there so we can prove our work. We are approaching pi over 2 from the left. And as I approach pi over 2 from the left, my y values are headed towards infinity. So again, proving our xy charts, proving the graph. OK. And now I'll leave these numbers up because we can get the limit from the right now. We can get, definitely get the limit from the right. All right. So B, the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right of tangent x. And since we have this already on the graphing calculator, it's good. We don't need to change anything. I put up my xy chart. And now, looking at the graphing calculator, right where it's highlighted, that's pi over 2. So now if I scroll down, these are the numbers from the right. So I'll start here. 1.5701. Uh, eight, I get negative 20,000. Let me go up one, 1. 1.57083. What was this one? 084. Sure, I'll put that in there. 1.57083, I get negative 25,000. I'll skip. 1.57081 or 2, we get negative 50,000. And then last one before pi over 2, just 1.5708. And we get negative 99,000. 999. Okay, so again, once again, just looking at the xy chart, as these numbers head to pi over 2 from the right, you see that my y values are getting increasingly smaller towards negative infinity. OK. And again, once again, you can prove it by the graph. As we approach pi over 2 from the right, you see that my graph is headed towards negative infinity. OK. which means that I can write the answer in negative infinity. Therefore, proving that since one tail is headed towards infinity and one tail is headed towards negative infinity, in between those tails lies a what? A vertical asymptote at pi over 2. So that's all we're doing here, is proving where there are vertical asymptotes. Okay, that was fun. Okay, so those were infinite limits. Now we deal with limits at infinity, meaning, meaning x will approach positive infinity or negative infinity. And what we look for is the behavior of y because limits at infinity will find horizontal asymptotes for us. So the next definition, let f be a function defined on some interval a to infinity, then the limit as x approaches infinity 
of f of x equal to some number l means that the values of x, f of x, or the values of y, can be made as close to this number l as we like by taking x sufficiently large. So we're, as x is getting larger and larger towards infinity, y is starting to approach some number l, right? y is getting closer and closer and closer to this number, meaning there has to be a horizontal asymptote there. So next is the line y equals l is called a horizontal asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if either the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity equals l. So x can approach positive infinity or x can approach negative infinity. Either way, it'll tell us where we have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we have a graph exercise. So let's go ahead and examine this graph and determine where we have horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes. All right, maybe I can zoom in one more time. How's that? There you go, perfect. Okay. All right, so we read graphs left to right. So looking at this graph, let's look for our vertical asymptotes first. We see that on the left side of this graph that one of these tails, or well actually both of these tails, this tail on the left is headed towards infinity, and this tail on the right is headed towards infinity. This means that if you have two tails headed towards infinity, then what must lie in between them? A vertical asymptote. And that is gonna be at what x value? That is negative one, right? Negative one. Let me label stuff here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, just labeling it nice and neat. Okay, so we're looking for vertical asymptotes. So what I'm gonna say is that Looking at the graph, let's say the limit as x approaches, what number is that? Negative one? As x approaches negative one from the left of our function is headed towards infinity. And then the limit as x approaches negative one from the right of f of x is also headed towards infinity. This means that as we approach negative one, both tails head towards infinity, we know that there must exist a vertical asymptote. So we'll say vertical asymptote asymptote at x equals negative one. There we go. And again, we are proving asymptotes by limits. Sure, we see it on the graph, but can we write it down in limit notation? That's the point of this exercise. Okay. Look at the graph again, and where else do we have a vertical asymptote at? Well, that's gonna be at the x value of two. When we approach two, when we approach two, we see that this tail head towards negative infinity, and this tail head towards positive infinity which could only mean one thing. So let's write it down. So. The limit as x approaches two from the left 
of f of x is negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is positive infinity. Since one tail goes to negative infinity, the other tail goes to infinity, we have another vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote at x equals 2. OK. Now, looking at the graph, there are no more vertical asymptotes. Let's look for horizontal asymptotes. And remember, with horizontal asymptotes, it has to look like y is starting to approach something but never touching. So let's look at the left side of the graph again. And well, first, I'll write this limit. I'll say, let's look at the behavior of y when our limit of x is approaching negative infinity. So we'll start with that. So with that being said, as we head towards negative infinity, so as we head towards negative infinity, look at the value, look at your y, characteristics of your y, look at your y values. So we see that as x heads towards negative infinity, y is slowly starting to approach what number? And that number happens to be 2. <clears throat> so as x approaches negative infinity, we see that there is a horizontal asymptote at 2. Will it ever touch? Probably not, but it'll get really, really close. So this means that you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. OK. Now last one I'm going to write. Let's look at the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x. OK, so this means that as x gets larger and larger and larger towards positive infinity, move that over just a bit. I don't think, do I need the calculator anymore? Hang on one second. I do not need the calculator anymore. So I'm just going to load this up. There we go. OK, perfect. Much better. OK, so as we're approaching infinity, we see that my y values slowly start to approach what number? And that number happens to be 4. So now, We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. OK, and that's it. That's all I wanted us to find. What asymptotes were on this graph, and how could we find them by limits? That's it. OK, well, for the next one, this is going to be a very, very, very important limit. It's just as important as that limit identity we made for sine x over x. This one is going to be important for limits at infinity. 
So this is gonna be a limits at infinity identity, okay? And I'm just gonna prove it by the graph to save us some time. So this says find the limit as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity of one over x. So starting with that, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x. Yes, we can make the x, y charts and all that good stuff. But again, I wanna save some time. I'm not trying to make a two hour video. Let's just look at this graph. And as x approaches negative infinity, look at your y values. Your y values start to slowly approach what number? Your y values slowly start to approach zero. So as x heads towards negative infinity, the function one over x is gonna become zero. Because this means we have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay, then let's look at the one on the right. The limit as x approaches infinity, positive infinity, of one over x. Do the same exercise as we approach positive infinity, you see that your y values slowly start to approach what number? Your y values slowly start to approach zero. So again, the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is going to be zero. So this is important, but we'll see it stated on the next page. But I just highlight it just to show you it's important. Okay, let's keep moving. All right, there it is. It's a limit law, it's a limit identity. We just saw it, it was proven by the graph. We could have proved it by x, y charts. Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x to the n, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x to any power n will still be zero. So we are gonna use this limit identity to help solve the next couple of problems. Okay, which means we get started at number five, Five says, evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of three x squared minus x minus two over five x squared plus four x plus one. Well, what we've learned from limits is, can't you just plug in the number? But what happens if you plug in infinity? Nothing good comes out of it. If you plug infinity into this problem, you're gonna end up with infinity over infinity and infinity over infinity is definitely not one okay this is another one of those indeterminate forms okay this is another indeterminate form so we have to figure out a way to fix it and one way to fix it is something called the power trick and the power trick is so nice so to evaluate this algebraically all you have to do is divide everything, every single term, by the highest power of x in the numer, well, sorry, divide everything by the highest power of x that's in the denominator. And right now, the highest power of x in the denominator happens to be x squared. So this means the way the power trick works is we will divide every single term by x squared and use this limit law above to help us evaluate the limit at infinity. Okay, so let's see how that works. We're gonna say the limit as x approaches infinity, and now we're dividing everything by x squared.
and now simplify. Of three minus one over x squared minus two, uh, not x squared, that is just x two over x squared. over five plus four over x plus one over x squared. Okay, now it's time to use the limit property above, the limit law, the limit property, the limit identity, whatever you want to call it. So we see that from the limit law that the limit as x approaches positive, positive or negative infinity of one over a x to the n will equal zero. Well, what terms in our limit look like one over x? That looks like one over x. This looks like one over x. That and that look like one over x. Which means that since our limit, since our limit is headed towards infinity, guess where all these one over x's are going? They're all going toward zero. So all we're left with is, well, let's do it. That becomes zero, that becomes zero. That becomes zero, and that becomes zero. So all we are left with is just three, whoop, wrong color. Three fifths, that's it. That's how we use the power trick. Okay, I'll show you another way to do this. Let's say you don't like the power trick because you don't like math magic. You don't like things poofing out of thin air. Why did we divide everything by x squared? Well, if that's the case, then if you don't like doing that, well, we have another cure. Factor the highest power out from the numerator and the denominator. In the numerator, the highest power is 3x squared. I mean, the highest power is x squared. Factor out an x squared. If I take out an x squared, this leaves me with 3 minus 1 over x minus 2 over x squared. Factor an x squared out of the denominator, since that's the highest power. You'll get left with 5 plus four over x plus one. Well, would you look at that? Your x squareds are going to cancel and we have the same exact statement right above it, where everything is going to zero out and we still get left with the answer of three fifths. Crazy, right? All right, so that's just another way to handle it. Um, one really quick way to check your work. If you remember anything algebraically about the rules of horizontal asymptotes. So, rule number two of horizontal asymptotes. Algebraic rules, no calculus, algebraic rules. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then we have a horizontal asymptote 
consisting of the leading coefficient of the numerator over the denominator. Would you look at that, people? The answer was there the whole time. Three-fifths. Read it and weep. But that is just to check your work. You have to use limits to prove your work. But you see how it's all connected. Okay. Let's keep moving. All right, don't worry, it's almost done. These are just fun little practice problems now. Okay, so remember this one, sine of one over x? It was the one with infinite wiggles, right? All the infinite wiggles. Well, that was when x approached zero. Now we want x to approach infinity. Well, sine of one over x is a composition function because it's made of two functions. It's made of the sine function and the one over x function, which means that from continuity, we learn that we can apply a limit inside a composition function, which is stated right below it. So number six happens to be fairly easy. We say, uh, just yeah, I'll rewrite it. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the sine of one over x is the same as sine of the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x. Now, does this look familiar? Is this a limit property we just learned above? And that answer is yes. The limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is headed towards what number? Zero. So this becomes the sine of zero, which just happens to be zero. That's it. Oh, life is great, right? All right, moving on. Okay. Seven, evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of the sine of x. Okay. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the sine of x. Now here's where I say thinking of the graph really helps you out. What does the sine function look like? The sine function does this. Right? So remember when x approaches infinity, we're looking for a horizontal asymptote. The function has to get really close to it, but never touch it. What do you see the sine function doing? If there were horizontal asymptotes, the sine function would be touching one negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one. So the sine function as x heads are towards infinity is bouncing between negative one and one and it's touching negative one and one. Does that mean we have a horizontal asymptote? And that answer is no, because in order to have a horizontal asymptote, our, our y values must be approaching something but never touch. Therefore, based on our graph, my lovely little sketch there, we cannot have, or the sine function does not have a horizontal asymptote. Therefore, this limit does not exist. There you go. If you don't believe it, without a calculator, make an xy chart. Sometimes graphs save your lives. Okay, just like on the next one, x cubed. I assume we all know what x cubed looks like. If you're doing the snake dance, you are correct. x cubed looks like that, right? Like that. 
So here is x cubed, which means that if you just think of the graph, you can have this limit like that, which means that for the first one, the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed, well, as x approaches infinity, where are these y values headed? Those are headed towards infinity. And that's OK, because we could say the limit does not exist. But remember, infinity is just another way to state that. OK. And then you have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x cubed. Well, look at it again. As x approaches negative infinity, where are your y values headed again? Well, not again, but where are your y values headed? These are headed towards negative infinity. So again, thinking of the graph can save your life. I'll leave that up. All right, nine. The limit as x approaches infinity of x squared minus x. And now again, here is the caution of trying to plug in infinity. If you plug infinity into this problem, you'll get infinity squared minus infinity, which gives me infinity minus infinity. Now, is infinity infinity equal to zero? That is a Definite no. So once again, this is called an indeterminate form, and we have to try and fix it. Well, like I said, it's a good thing we know algebra. Look at the expression. What could you do to manipulate this? And that answer is factor out an x. Factor out an x. OK, well, now it is safe to plug in infinity just because I factored it out. Because now if I plug in infinity, I get infinity times infinity minus 1, which happens to just be infinity. So this becomes infinity times infinity. And this play is allowed because infinity times infinity is just infinity. Or one more time, think of the graph. x squared minus x is the graph of a parabola. It's going to have an x-intercept at 0 and an x-intercept at 1. And it's going to look like this. Well. Look at your graph. As x heads towards infinity, where is this tail headed? Infinity. So makes sense, right? Either one works. All right. Number 10, the very last one. We made it. Oh, thank goodness, right? All right. So. Number 10, this one is tricky, tricky, okay? So I'll show you how to work it. Um, what we're gonna do is take option two for this one. So I showed you that you can divide everything by the highest power, or I told you you can factor it out. So that's what we're gonna choose for this square root problem. We are going to factor out. There's gonna be a little more work involved. OK, so looking at the numerator and the term inside the square root, you have the square root of x squared plus 2. So when I say factor out, and remember, everything's factorable, no matter what. What we're going to do is factor an x squared 
from x squared plus 2. But it's all still going to be inside the radical. Just trust me, OK? So the square root remains, but now I'm factoring out an x squared. What that leaves me with is 1 plus 2 over x squared over say 4x plus 2. Now, since the radical is now connected by multiplication, we can now take the square root of x squared separately. But remember, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. So we have to take that in mind. There's no other way around it. So what ends up happening is that this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of the absolute value of x times the square root of 1 plus 2 over x squared over 4x plus 2. All right. So I told you there's some stuff that goes into this. Because now we have to get rid of that absolute value. But how do we do so? How do I get rid of this absolute value of x? Well, to get rid of the absolute value of x, all depends on our limit. And I'll show you what I mean. I showed you before that the absolute value is an actual piecewise function. So we'll come back to that. The absolute value of x is the same as positive x for x greater than or equal to 0 and negative x for x less than 0. Well, if my limit is headed towards positive infinity, which restriction does that belong to? If x is headed towards positive infinity, does that mean x is greater than 0 or less than 0? That means that x is greater than zero. And since we can connect limits to piecewise restrictions, since this limit heads towards infinity, that means that x has to be greater than zero. This means that the absolute value can turn into just an x. All right, look at that football play right there. That was strategic, OK? All right, I'll leave that up for you. Which means, based on our piecewise function, we now get the limit as x approaches infinity of just x times 1 plus 2 over x squared over 4x plus 2. Oh, but now it's not done. Now we must power trick because this is a limit at infinity. So now we are going to divide by the highest power in the denominator. And that highest power happens to be just x, x to the first. OK. So this means we get the limit as x approaches infinity of x times the square root of 1 plus 2 over x squared over x, which is then over 4x over x plus 2 over x. All right. There we go. Sorry. Waiting for the computer to catch up. All right. And now cleanup time. My x's here will cancel. These x's cancel. So gone, gone, gone. 
And what we are left with is the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of 1 plus 2 over x squared over, what do I have left? 4 plus 2 over x. And now we're almost done because we can use that new limit property. As x approaches infinity, where is 2 over x squared and 2 over x going? Those are headed towards, guess what number? Zero. So all this leaves us with is the square root of 1 over 4, which is just 1 fourth. Oh, terrible. I know. But it's cool. Makes you think. All right. Those are limits at infinity. Yee-haw. That is it.